Hey, what's up, guys? Your art friend Pete here. And today, um, I'm doing some personal work because uh, I need to revise some things in my portfolio. And um, instead of uh, doing some of the the uh, normal character design things that we we do on this channel, um, I'm going to show you some of my own character designs that I'm going to be putting in my portfolio and revising. Um, this is Sorcerer Boar of Tuscany. If you can catch the name, there's a little bit of a pun in there. Um, he is a Sorcerer Boar, and we just shortened the name to Sorcerer Boar. So this is a personal character of mine, and um, I was happy with him first, and then I got some feedback from the guys at Riot and some other really cool companies when I went to San Francisco. I went to the Game Developers Convention this year, and it was it was amazing. Uh, I'll talk about it during the process uh, if I get a chance, but um, what I'm going to do is, well first I'm going to show you this guy right here. This is the one I created first, and um, I was happy with it. This is actually the third version, and um, uh, let's see, uh, after I did this and brought it in my portfolio to show to companies of my capabilities, um, they gave me a lot of good feedback. They said it was a little realistic for, not, not that it's, you know, real, but it's a little too realistic, realistic for the stylized feel that I was uh, shooting for. And, um, and to, you know, uh, make a lot more uh, shape shape definition and shape language in it rather than just uh you know realistic curves and and bends and folds and everything uh think more about the shape and uh exaggerate them more so what i did was i did a, a new version of him and this is where i'm currently at with him right now let me get those lines off of there and uh let me show you the sketch face Take that off. All right. Uh, the sketch on the left right here is the first version sketch, the one that I brought to GDC, the Game Developers Convention. I'm just going to abbreviate it GDC. And uh, I had to think about what I wanted to show, what I wanted to, to be the focal point. And it's obviously the head and the eyes to, to you know, really really sell the uh the pig snout and the the tusk and also the 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 shape of his shoulders that come out since he's a mage the shoulder pads and his uh his gold medallion and skull on his belt so those were the things i really wanted to sell and um also toward the end um i'm going to try to sell the magic that's going to be showing up in his hands and his palms and uh we'll put some illumination from that magic on on his body and stuff so uh, let's go back to the to the paints and this is where I'm at right now and uh, I thought you know since I already started this character and I needed to make a new video for you guys um, that I would show you the cleanup the, the like the the finalization process because um I also had a lot of questions, not just to to create characters and and how to start them, which I will do another video of, of thumbnails and and uh, creating characters in different shapes from start from scratch. But um, um, there were also some questions for how do you finalize a character? How do you bring it to a finished phase? And uh, we're gonna do that now. And as you can see, um, there's a lot of areas that are already. Uh, getting toward that finished phase like uh, on the front pose here like I'm working on the back pose uh, currently uh, on the front pose there's a lot of things that are pretty finished um, the only thing I need to add is the lighting from these fireballs that will be showing up in his hand and the fireballs right there that's the style I'm looking for um, real quick uh, this circle this sphere right here uh, it's really good to make something like this uh, when you're painting and doing your your uh, your values um, and the reason for that is because you can refer to this anytime 
for your shading, lighting, and your backlighting, rim lighting, whatever, bounce lights. And it, it's just really helpful when you're doing a character and you see all of the different sides, faces, and folds to to refer to this and say, oh, okay, this, this area with this plane right here on this sphere is going to have this level of value. And then this under part will have this level of value, like right under the eyebrows. You can totally see um, on the eyebrows, it's a good comparison to this sphere right here with the lighting and values. So uh, it's really good to have something like that, like paint something out like this. And you can also use it for, you can also transfer it to different files and everything once you save it out. So you don't have to recreate one each time unless you want different lighting. Then you create a new one. But um, yeah, this is where I'm currently at. And, and you could even see uh, right here on the back part, I'm getting there because the back part's not done yet. But um, the sphere, the sphere's uh, values and lighting is also showing up right here, like where the shade would be hitting the bounce light on the back and then the, the top light, the key light. So that's where I'm at. And um, I'm going to be painting and talking Chatty Cathy. So uh, I got to get these gloves. I have to finish the uh, the bottom here, uh, his pants, or not his pants, his fur. Yeah, I'm going to get some fur pants. Um, I'm going to finish this fur, uh, put a little more contrast in these gloves and, and rendering, and also the shoulder pads, and then marry these, because uh, this is part of the whole finishing process. If you, When you look at this, uh, this edge right here, from the shoulder pads to the blue on the back, you can see how sharp it is. We want to bring it to this level right here on the front part, where they're blending in, and you can see that it's one thing over the top instead of it looks like it was cut and pasted. So... Let's jump into the painting. Let me make sure I'm on my right layers. I will select his whole body so they don't go out of it. And then I'm going to hide it with Control H. Just replace setting my keyboard. Hang on a second. Okay. So we have our selection. And if you see that I have the selection on, I can paint outside of it and it won't go outside because I have the selection. Deselect. I don't want to deselect. What did I do? Okay. All right. Uh, where are we right now? Let me get a let me get a grip on where I'm at since I was talking. I kind of lost my spot. Uh, all right. We're on the back. Let's go with. I'm gonna deselect and we'll select the brown on this belt. And we'll take that off. All right, and since I got the front part done, I can really just grab the colors from this and uh, use them on this front part and start painting. Let me hide those. They're still there. Just Control H hides the marching ants, your selection. And sometimes they get in the way, so it's good to hide those. And um, for this stylized feel, I don't know if you can tell, if you look, you have to really e examine it to, in order to tell that there are sections within the rendering spots. Like you can see right here on the bottom right here on this, uh, this, this, um, oh goodness, I'm losing the words, uh, on this fold, you can see that there are sections of of shading and color and then and then the highlights come in and exact or not exaggerate but emphasize the the fold so if we use this method throughout it'll be consistent and also it's a it's a nice level of using the stylized painting feel a painterly feel and bringing out the uh, the values so Let's go with back to the belt and I will use the darkest color and I believe this is, nope it's not, okay good. We'll, uh, get in here and I'm going to lay down some shades. Uh, you don't have to be too neat in this process right now, like um, as far as the belt is concerned, like when we get to that fur up there you can be neat because it's already laid out for you like not for you you did it already and um it's just cleaning up but as far as the belt is concerned there's 
it hasn't been touched yet so we're gonna do this part very messy and sloppy like uh, where is what's showing up okay normal a piece of it hiding on me there. Let's go back and grab another dark color and see if that's the darkest we have. Apparently I lost my selection. Okay, I got it back. Let me get a little bit of light on this side just to pop it out. And always refer back to that sphere that you painted um, it's gonna be difficult maybe because you're doing the back uh, you might want to make a sphere with the reverse lighting and it's in the shadow and then you have the bounce light on the back which is what I'm currently working on right now like right now I have to imagine that I'm looking at the back of this sphere and light it that way uh, you can make your own if you want I mean I have a decent grasp on what I'm doing right now but if you don't then you might want to make a reverse version of that sphere so that you can get a get a good a good idea of what the back's going to look like so I'm going to go back in here and gonna, we're not going to make it too bright back here because this is the back of him so what we can do is we can make it a pretty normal lighting like it was lit from the front and then we can go in afterward and knock it down with the values so you can see that I'm making these these little sections in here of the uh, of the lighting and bringing the value back up with the color and voila. make the upper lip you won't see too much of that upper lip because this fold of blue this blue fold is overlapping the belt. So we get the top of it there. And we'll just run it through. And it goes across and around. So while I'm painting now, let me talk a little about what's been going on. Um, I've been very busy. And some of it good, some of it... Uh, not what I would like to be. I wouldn't say it's bad. I'm not in a bad position or anything. It's just, um, for you, I've been freelancing for a few years now and you know, every couple of years with freelance, um, you should take a break and try to get a job like, uh, work at an actual company or something because being your own boss, being, doing your own paperwork and being in charge of your, of everything really and managing yourself. Um, you can get run down and worn out and and it's always good to try to get into a company for another few years and and work because it does get it does get to be you know a little tiring sometimes and that's where I'm currently at I've been uh, revising my resume religiously and not in a religious way, like I don't have angels and stuff. I mean, like just paying a lot of attention to my resume and and my portfolio, and just uh, working for get, gathering all my freelance and and the jobs that I've done recently, and putting them all into my portfolio and updating it, and and also I've been in contact with I've been doing some art test for companies. Um. Uh, did uh. I got some really good feedback from Riot, from the guys who make League of Legends, and I have some friends who work in there and stuff, and I've been trying to get in. I did some freelance for them in the past, and they're just an amazing team and amazing people. I mean, I would love to work with them, like, in-house, not just freelance, but um, I've got some really good feedback from them uh, to work on my shapes, work on... Uh, work on um exaggerating my shapes and proportions and and also my my uh painting techniques and i was happy with my painting techniques i still am it's just that 
I need to push my painting style to their style of uh, the target that I'm going for and this is exactly what what you guys need to do if if you're shooting for a company that you want to work for you really need to be able to show that you can do their style and and take take their de take your designs their designs and make it like it fits into that world that game that they're developing and yeah that's pretty much where I'm at right now I'm pushing my stuff further and further and further to to just you know when you look at my portfolio you say hey that was that character from League of Legends it really looks like it and that's what you want in your portfolio that's what you want to to show and what you want it to look like when you show a company and like hey did you work for us in the past you know that's a really good feeling and and they can see that you can do their style um, there's some other tips for for portfolio um, and I'll try to you know shoot them out as I go uh, right now I'm drawing a blank <laughs> but um, as far as portfolio is concerned you really just want to target that company that you're looking at that you're trying to get into um, not only that uh, let's see you want to have options lots of options of characters that you made and that doesn't mean just throw all your your sketches and crap in there you have to make it presentable you have to be able to show it like you know this was a real thought process and you put some time and effort into it um, and that you can I can go more into that by saying and uh, not really admitting but just just saying that like you know I felt I feel like I was a little bit wrong in the past um, and in showing you um, you know my design process and it, that that is the design process that I learned you know I mean I was when I went to college when I when I read up on tutorials or or interviews or or um, you know researching how people work in the industry that's that's what I learned that's how I that's how I found out and that's what I was trying to show you but it's kind of changed a little now like they don't just want to see let's say I had this character right we have sorcerer board here they don't want to see the same guy with different clothes they want to see different options they want to see a tall boar they want to see a short stocky boar they want to see a fat boar a skinny boar you know what I mean they want to see options in that way not just a different outfit and a different ability you know don't make the same character with with a different ability or a different outfit you know just hey it's the same guy and he's just dressed differently you know they don't want that so try to try to do a lot of variation and this all starts in the sketch in the sketch stages and then you take the ones you like and you bring them to this level and then you take the one you like and you take it to the level that we're gonna have when we're finished here so it's just really good to have a lot of options this belt's looking okay for the moment I'll try to get bring it up to a render level that looks okay for now let's see I have an overlay layer here that's um that's for you know adding different colors into the uh, into the uh, the hues that are already into my picture like if you really look closely at the fur right here on top on the on the head you can see it's pretty monochromatic right there's a lot of red in there and that's pretty much what it is it's just a lot of red and what I did was I made an adjustment layer like right down here on your layers menu you go to curves and what you do is you you go to your different colors here there's red green and blue you can go to red let's pull this off and you can make a little dot there a little dot there a little dot there try to keep the one in the middle 
the dot that you made in the middle keep that still and uh oh oh I know what it is I have a selection on let me deselect let me deselect and do that again deselect and it would be good if you selected the area that you wanted to affect and then we'll go back to the curves um, go to your red make a dot there and you can see it's playing with the colors already as you make it and make your selection neater but what it's doing is it's it's uh, keeping most of the red in there and your luminosity and it's adding another hue to it so it's not just all red and monochromatic this is a really good way to play with your colors without painting them in manually and I learned this trick from a really good buddy of mine Ryan Jackson uh, Ryan Jackson's an awesome guy he worked for you know Vigil in the past and did Darksiders too really cool guy um, yeah so that's uh this is the layer I made right here where it's labeled curves and if I put it on you can see there it just added a nice blue and and over top of the red which made and blue and red make purple so that's what it's it's putting a nice magenta in there over the fur and it's not all monochromatic if I take it on and off you can see the difference on off on and off and so yeah just make a selection a neat selection and you know pick out the colors you want to use and then go down to curves and do that uh, I don't like to work in a lot of layers, but I do have a lot of layers here. A lot of these layers were the separate head and chest and, you know, gloves and different elements. And then I put them all together. I'm working on one layer right now. But, um, yeah, it's good to do that adjustment layer on another level so that you can turn it off and on and uh, not affect the actual layer of colors that you're working on. Uh, let's go back to, I think the belt looks good let me do these select these little gems on here and we'll hide them and grab the colors from these gems that are finished and grab my shading and there's a nice way to shade spheres like this Put your opacity at uh, about 90 to 80. Let me do 80. And then your flow to 20. And grab your shade. You can get in there nicely. Do a nice little semicircle hemisphere type thing. And make sure you're getting the right area with your lighting. And then what I like to do is grab the, the base color again and then hit the bottom of it so that there's a core shadow there's still a shadow in the middle and then you have the the bottom of it is still has some illumination coming through from the light and bouncing out the other side refraction and and then yeah and then you grab some of the uh, some of the orange here actually because it's reflecting grab the colors that are around like this surface on the top of this would be reflecting the yellow so you put a little yellow on top and this would be reflecting the blue also 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 just a little bit just hit it and then I go back up here this is the color of my lighting and I'm gonna grab my light <laughs> color make my brush small and then I'm going to light it from the direction that the light's hitting in the front and some not everything needs lighting like you don't need to put a light on everything lights coming from that way all right and then we grab you can just pick a white or you can pick the color that you have there like you can see if you can see my screen well enough with the resolution it's not actually white it's um this looks like it's white on this on this highlight but it's not it's actually like a cream so and a lot of people get confused sometimes with colors like hey that's white that's white no it's not it's actually a really a very bright color of the color that it's 
speculary, speculating, whatever that word is. So I'm going to hit that and we go to 90, 90, make sure it's uh, hard. There we go. And I could probably push that shading a little more and those look better. So that's what I've been up to for the last uh, month and a half. I went to California. I'm currently in Philadelphia, guys, so California is a big trip for me. It uh, costs about a grand to go to GDC, and I feel it was well worth it. I've really had a great time. I met some awesome people. So it was just a really good time. I got to visit my brother after the co the conference. I got to I got to see my grandmother who's very old. I'm happy I got to see her. My uncle, my cousins, I've met cousins that I haven't met before, which is always great to have family. Family in far places and meet new people. And I also got I also got a tour of Riot Studios because I was I happened to be in the area visiting my family. And Yeah, it was it was really good. I mean I got to see my friends who work at Riot and and I also got feedback from a lot of the head artists, Josh Singh, uh, Oliver Chipping, Adam Mergway. P.O. Rivago, my buddy, and I had a really great time. Sorry if I sound monotone, I'm just really, this is, as, as much as autopilot as this is, you know, painting this part, painting uh, this character, like I'm already past the hard part, I've got all the values and, and the colors and, you know, the textures down. Um, I'm still thinking and trying to be conscious of it. But, um, so what they told me at Riot was to work on my shapes, my proportions, and that's what I've been doing. And I figured I would show you guys. Oops, no, not a group. Okay. I figured I would show you guys, you know, the process of me cleaning up and working on the feedback that I got from them and letting you know what's up it's hard guys it's really hard to be in this in this field and I just keep hearing stories from you know fellow artists and guys in the industry who are like so much better than me and more experienced and they're just having a hard time getting a job. It's really hard to get into this. I'm not trying to scare anybody away, but at the same time I am. Because, you know, if you have a chance to do something else with your life and you're not, like, 100% committed to this, don't jump into this. There's a lot of guys who know what they're doing and they can't get jobs. It's just, like I said, I'm not trying to deter you. But I am trying to make you cautious that what you're going into in this industry, it's really rough. It's a lot of rejection. A lot of rejection. And you just got to keep rolling with the punches. And, you know, eventually you'll get something. But it's <laughs> it's a waiting game. It's a process. It's, it's nerve-wracking because, you know, you got bills to pay. And sometimes you have to take a job that you don't want to or... Or, you know, flip burgers or something to to pay your bills. And I appreciate burger flippers. I was a burger flipper, but I don't want to do it. I want to commit to what, commit to what I set out to do, my goals, and I want to achieve them. I want to take the feedback that I got from the companies that I was looking at and 
I want to be able to show them that I can do this. I can do what you're doing and I can do it with you. And that doesn't mean you're better than them. It just means, you know, I'm, I can do this, you know, I can be on this level. Give me a chance, man. No, but it's all good. They got jobs to do. It's not like, uh, they're out to shoot you down personally or anything. They're just doing what's best for the company that you can't take it personally. There's, there's just tons of people who, who want to do this and only a select few get picked. And what they're doing is they're not saying, Oh, you're not good enough and blah, 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 which, which is kind of what it is, but it's not at the same time. It's that this guy's better than you and he's a better, he's a better candidate for our company. You know what I mean? Like, We've got a triple-A game here, and they spend millions of dollars on it. Millions of dollars. And do we want to trust you with it? So it's not like they're just targeting you and saying, no, no, we don't like you. You're not good enough. It's that this other guy just happens to be better suited for what we need for, you know, to spend millions of dollars on this game. So... What I can encourage you guys to do if, you know, if you're not even close to being in the industry or you're still doubting or or, or want to work for a game company and don't have any experience is to um, work on some projects with uh, friends or other people who are looking. You can go on Craigslist or, or um, you know, Gamma Sutra or some other sites and forums and look for indie developers or people that are developing games and need artists and you know if you can afford it if you can afford to do it you know you have money on the side or whatever or you're living with your parents right now take advantage of that and 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 work on a project with people who are committed even if it's for free like right now i can't do that i i need i need income because i live you know i'm paying my own bills and I can't afford to do free projects because it's not going to feed me. But, and it's not a pompous thing. It's not, I'm not turning down projects for that to work for free because, you know, I deserve money, blah, blah, blah. No, it's, I, I need it, you know. It's sad that, you know, money is one of those things that you need to live. So, um, I don't turn down projects because, I'm not interested or I don't believe in the people who are doing it. It's just, if it's pro bono or free, I just, I can't afford to do it right now. But if you guys can afford to do it, then you need to jump on some of those, some of those opportunities because it's only going to help um, you being able to work with a team, being able to uh, collaborate and contribute and also in your portfolio, uh, when you add your finished product or the part that you worked on, you need to credit the other people who worked on it as well. Like, if you did a character design and it was all yours, then you you know you only have to put your name. But if somebody else tweaked it or did the sketch and then you painted it, you need to put that name in there and give them the credit. You can't say that you know that was. This was all me when it wasn't. So give credit when it's due, and that will take you a long way. Uh, that was one of the the uh, good feedback. One of the good things, the feedback I got um, at GDC. Um, I worked on a video game called War Mage Battlegrounds in the past, and and I I um I did the sketch part. I did the clean line part and then I laid down the colors and and another person did the the finished paints and I credited those that was my buddy PO who works at Riot currently and you know that was when I showed them my portfolio they're like oh who did this part and I was like oh PO did that and the guy I was working with and they were like oh wow usually people don't credit the other people they just you know put it in and so it's a good thing to have the credit for other people's work if they contributed to the project that you worked on. If their hands touched what you touched, then 
you need to uh, put their name in there and recognize them. Uh, right now, you can see me defining this, defining the glove here, his gauntlet. And Sorcerer Boar is a mage. I would like to have him, you know, doing some kind of some kind of animal magic like in the first the first version of Sorcerer he has a uh, an an eel he was a water type let's let's go through this real quick look at look at this this old picture uh this older version of Sorcerer I like it I like his face I like that it shows off you know the boar his eye um, is very vibrant and it leads your eye all the way like right to it like when you first look at him it's the brightest spot on the picture so your eyes is directly led to that Im immediately initially and as as you look more at it the second point of interest is the blue the blue crystal that's on his chest and and then that leads you down to his to the skull on his belt and and then if you if you looking at the skull in his belt between that and the crystal you can see the magic flowing and what that does is lead your eye to the eel the head of the eel because it's a line it's a line of magic that a uh, directional line so the composition was pretty decent um if i do say so myself but the composition was pretty decent how the uh the eye right here leads you down to this or even the mouth and it could go one of two ways it can go this way from the eye down to the head of the eel and then back to here or it can go this way lead you down that way but either way there's a there's a there's a a working line of energy in it the only issue was the uh you know pushing the style to match what i'm shooting for the companies i'm shooting for so that's what we're currently working on and I'm going to be thinking about you know the magic I want to make and I would like to have the eel make it magic but at the same time it it does take away from the from the design of him and also with the blue flame I had blue magic on the previous one uh, the red wasn't working for me on the uh, I liked it at first like I said I liked everything about this at first but after the the feedback that I got from the game company says um, they didn't say to change the red I, I changed the red to blue because you know after all of their great feedback I thought you know what else on top of that can I possibly do so I went and I played with the different red colors on the previous version and I'm like oh, the blue looks actually really good because of the blue flame because of the magic he's using like it didn't make sense to to have the the red outfit with a blue flame and that could just be me and plus he also has a lot of red in his he also has a lot of red in his uh in his fur so it was like just you know a buttload of red and select that invert and i'm going to there we go the selection okay okay all right uh, we're in the right spot Let me turn that off. um also let me tell you about the shapes like when you look at him what do you see what's the shape it's obviously a pentagon a five-sided geometrical shape the skull on his belt is an upside down pentagon let me put another layer so I can show you guys we get red get 100% and look at the shapes one two three four five the crystal one two three four five the nose one two three four five and I don't know if you would have noticed this if I didn't tell you but these are subtle things that you know one two three four five 
one, two, three, four, five. And the head, one, two, three, four, five. And then his whole body. It all leads into uh, pentagons, and I probably made it too explicit, you know what I mean? Like, hey, this is a five-sided object, and you know, um, I, that's just the way I was doing it, you know? It's, it's, it was, it worked for me, it worked for him, for this source of war, and uh, these are the things that I was told to work on, you know, the shapes, and I don't want to sound like conceited or anything, but I mean, I felt like I knew this, like I knew this stuff, but I didn't show it in my portfolio and it hurt, you know what I mean? It hurt my, my chances. And at the, at the same time, you know, I knew this stuff and I didn't put it down and you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's, it's that, you know, when you finish your work and you feel like it's good it's at a good point and you're happy with it put it away for a day or two and then come back and put your work next to a bunch of the game art that the company you want to work for makes like grab their character designs grab their grab their splash art and all of their poster work and then put your artwork next to theirs and if it, if it fits in if you look away and then you come back and you can't tell which one's yours or it looks like it fits then you're, you're close you know what I mean you're you're pretty much uh, you can say you're close you can say you're there but if you look at the page like like throw it right in the middle like put one put one of theirs here there's here there's here there's here put yours right there there's here and this is yours put theirs 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 just do that make a matching game out of it out of yours your artwork and then look away and then look back and if you're having a hard time telling which one's yours or not a hard time but you know I mean if it looks like it fits then you're pretty darn close but if it doesn't look like it fits and it stands out guess what back to the drawing board time to work some more and that's uh those are the tips i got you know what i mean and i'd like to share those with you guys so that's what i'm doing sharing is caring put this layer on and off to see the blue i really like that blue over there making over the reds making it purple Select it and hide it, and we're gonna continue the gloves. That's where we were at. So let's fidget with these gloves. Um, continue making this shading in here. So I will try to talk in between doing all this stuff. I want to be able to focus on this as well as as well as talk about things so um i think i went over everything i wanted to about my trip to the game developers convention or conference so i'd like to focus on this and help you guys i'll bring up subject as they come to my head Get the contours. Sorry, there's a motorcycle outside. 
and get these things. Um, contours. Okay, so this glove is going like this from the inside. This is the inside of the glove from the contour. Contours basically mean the direction that the, the faces, the planes, the objects are going. So this is a, basically a cone and make the inside go in the direction of that cone, that cylindrical shape. And I'll grab that color. It's not so dark. I don't know if they're watching, but um, I just want to express how grateful I am to to some select people for you know taking the time out to give me critiques and feedback on my work and what they want to see. Um, and definitely Oliver Chipping, Pio Rivago, Josh Singh, Adam Mergway. Um, Kenny Carvalho, there's a lot of the guys from Riot really, you know, extended their hand in friendship and they didn't have to do that. They didn't, they could have ignored me like, you know, like a lot of places do. They could have just said, hey, you were good stuff, but you're not what we're looking for. They kind of, you know stood in contact with me and said, you know, this is what you need to work on, this is what you need to do, and it felt good, it was like, even though it was still, even though it was kind of a rejection still, they at least told me what I needed to do, um, you can't get butthurt about it, and that's the first reaction, you're like, oh, I'm not good enough, oh, I didn't, I thought I was good, but, you know, I'm not, no, you can't do that, you're, you're good, you're good you can you can do great things with your your art and you know develop your skill but you need to be what they need you need to not just you know contribute to the team but you need to be able to to push the team further it's not just about like hey i can do what you guys are doing it's 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 about i can go in there I can I can um, create things at an awesome level and then I can backtrack and pull the rest of the team with me to that level and that's that's what they're looking for it's not to remain static and and you know okay can you do what we're currently doing no it's can you can you make what we're doing better and then bring the rest of bring the rest of the team up to that that level as well and that's not to say that like you're better than these awesome artists it's just it's more than just contributing it's 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 making the team better than it already is not because you're better than them but because you have you have something to put on the table Like, um, alright, um, back to the gloves and the character, um, you see a lot of detail in the face, and I don't want that much detail in the rest of my, in the rest of the character, um, the face is the selling point to me, the, the, the eyes, the tusk, and the nose, that's why they're extremely super detailed, um, but when I go down, you can see the sash around his neck, it's not very detailed. It's just suggested that there's cloth and, and threads going through there. Um, that's going to stay that way. That's not, that doesn't have to be super defined like the face. Um, the skull and the gem on his chest, they're super detailed because those are selling points. When you go down to the front of the legs, they're not as detailed as, as the head is. And the reason for this is because you don't want to, you don't want to, make everything at the same level of detail because then it looks like there's no detail it's just not readable like and appealing like your eye doesn't gravitate anywhere because it's gravitating everywhere and i hope that makes sense but um have a painterly style and 
which means you know if you go back to painterly style it means like if you go back to oil painting um, techniques like you just base base everything out and and make it readable and then you bring your focal points to a higher level like uh, the gloves they're they're readable and they're just a little bit um, between readable and detailed but they're not the selling point I mean the uh, the flame that's gonna be in his hand that's a selling point because that's magic and that's what he uses and it's what you want to read and what you want people to see so and I want people to see his face I want people to see the skull and the gem and those are what is super detailed everything else is just pretty much you know painted for value sake and for hue um, so the gloves are gonna stay at this level even though they're not super detailed and refined they're readable you can tell that they're stitching here that this is a this is um another layer over top of the glove um i'm still having trouble <laughs> remembering what the word was it's so simple <laughs> um not seams goodness all right i'm gonna stop thinking about it because i feel dumb um Let's see what else. This could be knocked down. I'll bring this in. Let's just put another pass over this with the highlights. And. that out what's under here all right let's grab this shading color and start putting that underneath here grab it again So that's that's the, one of the biggest deals about finishing a painting and artwork. It's not about making everything extremely detailed and all to the same level of detail. It's about only detailing your focal points and what you're trying to sell in the picture. Concept art isn't about making a finished detailed painting. Concept art is about selling something of interest, points of interest. See, like right now, I'm just like suggesting that there's fur here. I'm not really, I'm not really making exact fur like on the head. Just a little bit, a little bit of tufts in there. I do not like working without music, so let's put some music on. Yay, Final Fantasy music. Uh-oh, let's lower it. Uh, you've heard this in the other videos, with Final Fantasy uh, 14 music, Realms Reborn. Oh, my girlfriend loves that game. I love the music. It's really great to work to. I hope this doesn't, the music doesn't inhibit me from talking. <laughs> so I get carried away with the music. You might hear me hum a few bars. Such great music. See the level of detail right here on the arm? It's not as much as the head, 
but it's more than the feet than more than the legs so you can see it's it's almost like a gradient of detail and I don't mean a gradient like use the gradient tool or anything I mean like it's going it's going from detailed to sort of detailed to not very detailed suggestive and it's that's it's good to do that in your work as far as selling your focal points now it's time to marry these edges and I'm going to marry these edges with the blue the blue is the stronger color and it's in the shade so grab that and make an edge and we're going on almost an hour now an hour of just cleaning this up and I'm not trying to be uh, a jerk about it but you know take your freaking time guys I mean you're not gonna there are some times where you know you just you're in the zone and you bang something out and it's awesome but it doesn't happen all the time you feel like you're struggling like take some time and it, it, it really helps to take time at the beginning of the process that you know the thumbnails um, the uh, the silhouettes that you're creating to uh, come up with an idea for a character or a pose or even for anything really for for landscapes for you know vehicles portraits uh, paintings full-blown paintings um, take your time in the planning process it's, it's going to help you it's, it's it, it it sucks a little bit sometimes like you know because you're sitting there like thinking of things and and like oh what's gonna work what's gonna work kind of like you're lost a little but <laughs> that's that's the way you come up with successful pieces by planning it out sometimes you, like I said sometimes you get lucky sometimes you bust out something awesome without even thinking but the best way to do it is to plan it out take your time in the planning process don't don't just do you know, expect to jump to details and 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 like oh this is gonna be great this is gonna be great like only seasoned and experienced artists are gonna like know exactly what to do like really fast and quick I mean if it comes to you natural like then then you know more power to you and that's I, I've said it in the past like this is not a channel for you know prodigies this is a channel for for people in development and who want to get their make their seal further you know and not knocking prodigies there are people who like just you know just pick up a pencil and it's magic but you know the majority of the people you have to work at what you're doing you have to work at what you want to achieve and this is what I'm trying to instill in even for people who are amazing like that and you know just pick up a pencil and create magic even for people like that it's still good to know you know the process the the way to come up with something good because it's no good to you creating awesome stuff if you don't understand why and how you're doing it I hope this doesn't sound like a rant but it's not it's you need to understand why you're putting something somewhere why you're placing this object here why you're shading this like that and if if you can't understand it you're not going to understand why it's wrong when you finally get it wrong you know uh, that globe looks fine let me put a little highlight right there on the arm hit that off because the glove the glove shading is there we go mm -hmm. this other glove going because we're going on an hour and I'm gonna take all the time I need on this 
but I don't want the video to run extremely long. It's okay if it does because, you know, I am all for long videos. I hate changing videos in the middle of working and, you know, stopping my groove. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I wanted to say, give a shout to everybody, all of my subscribers, I cannot believe I'm at almost 900 subscribers, you guys make me so happy, thank you so much for all your support, all your help, and you know, growing the channel, I'm really grateful to you guys, thank you. make a little bow here not like a bow ribbon but a little bowing coming out it's a little bit so it's not so it's not so streamlined and lassoed almost 900 subscribers <laughs> it's not an amazing number but it really means a lot to me it really does thank you so much guys it's like people watching like 900 gosh I've got 5,000 subscribers so what so what that's cool congratulations I've got 900 subscribers of, you know, people that want to learn and that I'm, you know, possibly helping. I, I love helping people. Which is why I was so appreciative when uh, the guys from Riot took out the time to, you know, tell me what to fix and, you know, suggestions on what to do. I need to get away from these legs right now. Holy crap. Get away from the legs, Pete. I'm over detailing them. It's like I said earlier. Try not to spend too much time in those areas that aren't focal points. Yeah, the guys that write, just, you know, they, they took the time out to tell me like what to change, what to fix, what to work on. And uh, that's what I like to do for people. And it just feels so good when it's, you know, given back. If you guys feel like you can help somebody, it doesn't have to be artwork. It could be anything, you know, helping a friend move. Uh, doing chores for for your mom, you know, so so like you know, she's appreciative, and even if she isn't, just because you're appreciative, do something for somebody because you're appreciative of them, not not to get a, a pat on the back. It might come back to you, it might not, you know. You might get. I mean, if you're doing something for your parents, you know, <laughs> they gave you life, so you know you pretty much owe them for the rest of your life and don't expect anything back like mom I did the dishes give me my allowance no 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 stop that but, you know just be grateful for things that you get guys it's a lot of there's a lot of ungratefulness around today and people feel like they're entitled to things and you don't want to feel like that. Put your ego down. Put your ego aside. Like, 
sometimes I'll sit here and I'm like, I've been working in the game industry for five years and I'm having such a hard time getting a job. Why is this? Why is it like this? And I have to stop myself. I have to say, you know, stop. There's people who have been working in the game industry for 10 years, 15 years, and they're having a hard time getting a job. It's just really difficult. Put your ego aside. some of that light color but a highlight on there simple highlight a little bit of a notches for texture source of bore no but like I was saying like do something nice for somebody. It's it's not it's not to receive something, but it's just to make you feel good, you know. It, it does feel good giving to people and sharing, you know, things that'll help others, you know. Not just in art, but I feel like uh, I'm not. I don't want to be one of those guys, but. I feel like, you know, the human race would be, like, so much further if we all just, like, chipped in and helped each other. We'd get things done faster and more accomplished instead of living for ourselves. Living for our own personal gain. And grab the hand of the person next to you and drag them along kicking and screaming. What's that bend? That's normal. Okay. <laughs> Go outside and it's black. Deselect, select, back to that layer. Alright, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Let's get that other glove. <coughs> uh yeah yeah looks like just that glove we'll get this glove and then we can do our magic actual magic not painting magic I guess that's the same uh, let me marry this the bottom of this sash in here more oh, too close too close a little too close <laughs> Ooh, look at that. Miss this detail over top of this. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this area right here. All of that. And look how not finished that is in that. So we have to do that too. Let's do that now and just get it out the way. Since we're in the area. This is going to be darker because it's in the shadow. So my, my next couple of videos are probably going to be me doing this, uh, revising my portfolio. Like I would like to go back to sketch with Pete and, um, and do more tutorials and stuff, but on like new characters and and different uh topics on creating characters but i need to get my portfolio stuff done and i don't want to not make videos for you guys so i'm gonna kill two birds with one stone most likely and record my process of revising my portfolio and um i hope that's okay with you guys it's gonna have to be <laughs> okay with you guys but um that's most likely what the next few videos are going to be about. Um, 
I might do a sketch with Pete if I have like a lazy day or something and I have time to get away from my portfolio or applying for jobs or whatever or work um, do freelance like if I have time away from freelance I'll uh, jump into a sketch with Pete but it's probably gonna be this I'm probably gonna be doing this taking uh, stuff from my portfolio and making it better from the feedback that I got from the companies If you have any questions please leave them in the in the bottom area in the comments section I appreciate all of your comments and questions and I try my best to reply to them and get back to them um, and if you're, if you're watching the video please listen right now I'm using a Wacom Intuos 4 medium size uh, I'm using Photoshop CS 3 because I'm not going to buy a new one when this does the job that I need um, buy a new Photoshop and um, also uh, what else what else oh, these I'm trying to list off the questions that I get that are just uh, I pretty much put in the description that people will keep asking anyway and uh, it's okay just you know read I'm not mad about it just uh, read the descriptions of the videos and you'll most likely see the what I use in my music refer or my music the uh, credit and all that blah blah brush stop getting too detailed and defined just blop down your colors blop them down you can define it later if you need to right now just plop it down drop it down Oh, 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 that's why. Okay. I have another uh, curve layer on, and I'm wondering, why isn't that showing up? What is going on here? And that layer was stopping me from picking the color I wanted. Uh, pay attention to your layers, guys. So I have a layer specifically for that blue. Like, you can see the blue. Watch when I put the layer on. It gives it a green hue on top of the, uh, or a yellow hue on top of the uh, the highlights which which makes it green because yellow and blue make green obviously so if if I have that on it's not letting me pick the colors that I actually want so messing with the values now so if we take that off and that goes back to earlier when that layer was about the curves which I mentioned how to do earlier so if I put that back on okay let me that's what I need to do. I need to go in here and do that to marry it. Okay, sweet. Is that gonna do anything? How about this layer? Okay. Cool, cool, cool more detail on this so these blobs that I just put in what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of a line around them just to push out that shape and then gradually shade them more toward kind of like a gradient this way like it's darker darker lighter 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 and then up to lighter and it gives that stylized gradient look I 
I just, uh, another thing, yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, actually, uh, I might be a little scatterbrained right now, but, um, I did an art test for Three Rings Design, and they're actually a company under Sega, and, uh, that'd be cool to get that job, too, because they're, they moved their company to Philadelphia, which would be very convenient for me, since I already live in Philadelphia. Um, yeah, <laughs> working for Sega, that'd be so cool. Um, they're waiting on a few more candidates to get their art test done as well, so they can adequately judge and reject whoever they want. Uh, that might include me, so, I mean, I'm hopeful, I like, I like being confident, but, you know, you can't, you can't be like, oh, I got that job. Because when you do get rejected, you're going to be like, damn it, I didn't get that job. Like, why didn't I get that job? You just have to be like, okay, well, they didn't need me. They needed somebody else. And you keep trying. You keep trying, guys. I mean, don't give up. Don't give up if you want to keep doing this. If you're going to, if you're not good with rejection, if you're not good with rejection, you do not need to work. You don't need the stress and aggravation of this industry. <laughs> Quit right now and go be a doctor or a lawyer or something, whatever you want to be. <laughs> if you can't take rejection and criticism, then don't deal with the aggravation. I'm okay with it. I can I can take it. I'm already to a point where, you know, like there's no looking back. I'm a point of I'm a point of no return right now. Like I've put so much effort into my my abilities and my development of being an artist that I can't turn around and say, Ah, time for a new career. Let me go sell houses or something. And, and uh, Whenever I bring up something like that, like another occupation, I am not knocking that occupation, okay? If you want to do that and you're good at that, that's fantastic. And you're going to be better at it than I am. But I put a lot of uh, time into this, into my, my career as an artist. And I can't, I feel like I can't give up. I can't quit it and go do something else with the rest of my life. And I admire people who can do that. I mean, that's that's like that's a true gift right there. If you can, if you're able to take something that you put so much time and effort and years into, and then and just put it down and say, I'm gonna do something else. I mean, that's it takes cojones, it takes some balls. But um, I unfortunately don't feel like I can do that. I'm gonna stick this out and try to get a good job not just a good job but you know a job where I want to work uh, a, a, at a game that I love to play I love playing League of Legends like I, I didn't I didn't just pick it up to to uh, you know learn what the characters look like and how it played and stuff like I actually fell in love with the game I love playing it outside of you know wanting to work at Riot and it would just just be really awesome to to get that to happen to, to work at a place where you love to play the game alright uh, we're doing like everything but this glove over here let's get this shoulder pad done so I can get to that glove mm -hmm. hope you guys are enjoying painting with me I would like you to pay attention and watch how I'm touching this up and finishing this but you don't have to I mean this is just you know draw with me have somebody to draw with I didn't have this. I wish I had this. I wish I had, like, you know, somebody to draw with. There are these videos when I was in college and young that I'd, I'd probably be further than I am currently. But, um, that's the whole, that's the whole awesome thing about the internet now. Like, you can communicate with people that, that do the same thing you want to do. And I didn't. I didn't have that. 
It's like, am I doing this right? Am I doing this right? No. I don't know. Just keep doing it. But now you can go on YouTube, you go on Google, and you can see if you're doing something right. You can see the, the techniques and the, uh, not just get told like, oh, this is composition and this is lighting and this is how it works and blah, blah, blah. But people can actually show you how it works. Like, I'm a visual learner and that's a huge help to me. Being able to watch somebody to do something is is really helpful to me. I'm a visual learner. I I'm I can read a book. I mean, I, <laughs> I have I have the capability of reading. I just I don't learn better that way. I'm not. I'm like I I stumble over the the words and and I'm like, what does this exactly mean? Like, I need somebody to show me. So I know there's a lot of people like that who learn like that. All right, Pete, get out of here. You're detailing too much. Let's get to that glove. Okay. I talk to myself. Tell myself what to do. Okay, glove. Put an edge on there so it pops off. Get there. Oh. Music is so good. <laughs> okay, we got the top. So when you have a big blank area like this, don't just start shading um, and, and guessing where the edges are. It's best to take your shade color and draw draw out the lines of the edges so that you're not really guessing and then you can just pretty much you know it's like coloring in a coloring book you can draw the lines out like there would be the top edge of that there would be the wrap around for the trim there's the word oh man see like i said before i feel dumb it was it was a simple word that just did not pop into my head the trimming the trimming of of his gloves and his outfit jeez oh, idiot Stupid, stupid, stupid. Alright. Uh, I'm going to deselect and select just this color. So I don't paint over the... Paint over the fur. Deselect. It would probably help to make selections and save them, but um, you know that just to me that creates like too many things to look out for, you know, too many layers and and aspects of the artwork to to have to keep track of in tabs and go back and really slows everything down. Just make your own. If you don't want to do that, just make your own um, your own selections like this manually each time you need them and paint and big blobs and sections. Let's bring this, because I want to bring that down more. Dun 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 ba, 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 ba. Sorry, like I said, I love working with music and singing when I draw, so you're gonna have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. in here 
and I'm doing this all in real time this video is not going to be sped up only because like I'm showing you like specifically um, how to bring a, how to bring a character to a final stage and I feel like I would be able to do that effectively if I was if I sped the video up and I'd be like okay well this is this this is that then you can actually see what I'm doing while I'm doing it and I can talk about it freely instead of trying to catch up with different areas of the picture when of the painting when while I'm talking so I hope you guys appreciate it not that I feel like I'm great or anything I mean I just hope this is okay with you guys to have a long video so I like long videos <laughs> Alright, so let me get this color and I'll get a feather brush. Nothing fancy. I'm not using any fancy brushes, guys. Uh, back to what I was saying about what I use. Um, Intuos 4 Medium, uh, Photoshop CS, and I just, I've been using only two brushes this entire time. I've been using this brush. If you can see uh, my brush, my brush palette over here, um, it has shape dynamics on, which makes it, uh, which ma and I put the the minimum diameter down to ten, so it doesn't go to an extremely fine point. It ends at a uh, at about ten, ten percent of the brushes width, and anything else no sent to pen pressure and then on color dynamics I have the flow jitter up and that's what creates that no it's not is it <laughs> sorry uh, pen pressure opacity. okay yeah opacity is all the way down and the flow is at yeah okay the flow is affected that way okay um, they're both set to pen pressure and the opacity is at zero and the flow is at 50. And smoothing is on, but I don't know what that does. I didn't touch it, that was automatically on. But that's the one brush I'm using. And then the other one is a basic a basic feather brush, big feather brush. And uh, this brush that I just showed you, the settings, that gives you a really nice painter, painterly feel. And my opacity is at uh, anywhere from 80, 90 to 100 on the actual brush on the, or the actual painting right here and the flow is always down to about 20 or 30 because the flow when I move fast like that the flow creates um, kind of a, a gradient in the painting in the in the brush stroke I mean the slower you go and the more the slower you go and the more pressure you put it puts down a harder color but if you go softer softer and quick it creates a softer stroke so you just lay down like grab your dark color like right in here if you want to go from from uh, dark to light you just start your dark right there and then lightly push push on the, the outside right here and instead of going over with the same color trying to get it what you do is you grab the gradient you just made from dark to light here you grab that middle one and you just fill in that chunk of area and then you grab the light there fill in that chunk of area and then you can blend it with a little bit of light touches like that so you have a nice painted gradient and it's not so streamlined or not so uh, feathered looking but it looks like paint strokes do the same
I hope you guys are doing okay. I hope you guys are uh, trying to achieve your dreams. You know, if you want to go to school, you can go to school. If you don't, then you work real hard. Because you don't really need a degree to get into a lot of different game companies. And that's not, I'm really not saying don't go to school, but there's a lot of people who didn't go to school. The only thing I would say about going to school is make sure you do your research. Pick a good school, a school that's going to actually teach you, not that's just going to take your money and say, here's uh, here's 3D Max, here's Photoshop, here's Maya, you know. Okay, go ahead, make something. And... Uh, those schools are disgusting. You just take your money and oh, stop ranting. Stop ranting. No, okay, but um, now really do your research if you want to go to school. If you don't want to go to school, that's fine. Just work really, really hard. Pay attention to what you're doing. get this glove what happens if I deselect okay it's gonna give me that <laughs> Oh yeah, if you guys aren't following me on Facebook, you don't have to, but if you want to, uh, you can go to my page and follow Peter Gandia. Let me look at my Facebook real quick, so make sure the name's right. Yep, or Gandia Peter, G-A-N-D-I-A-P-E-T-E-R. Type in facebook.com slash Gandia Peter and hit the follow button. Don't hit the friend request button. I mean, if you want to be my friend, you could be my friend. <laughs> but um, I'm getting a lot of friend requests from um, people that, you know, I don't know how to say this without sounding like a jerk. Jeez. Um, I'm not going to accept everybody's friend requests because I do use my Facebook, one, for my art, and two, for... for um, for personal things as well so uh, having like a giant amount of of people on my Facebook friends um, friends list kind of gets a little distracting sometimes uh, but no you can definitely uh, message me if you have questions and you know follow and see all the stuff that I'm working on and the posts that I put like I usually Facebook is usually my most up-to-date uh, thing if you want to know what I'm up to or what I'm drawing. Jeez, Pete, you're such a jerk. No, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I just, I need a personal life as well as a professional life, so that's all. Just asking for a little privacy. But, you know, on that same note, I'm the dumb one and I should probably make a separate page for just for my art. Fidgeting just a little bit then with this fur, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so I'm creating the lighting right here, but I'm going to shade it because, you know, there's no light hitting this. It's actually, this is the inside where the, of the glove, this circle right here. So down there below it would have shading. So let me grab my feather brush and grab that dark and just, there we go. So you, I don't want to say you make your light source inside and then you shade it, but you just make the, uh, just develop the contours out and then hit it with the shade. And, uh, I'm gonna get the shade, 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 shade. It's my darkest color over here and bring it here. This is my shade. Knock it, knock it, knock it. Okay, that's enough of feather. Let's go back to where are my darkest? Let's go see what this one's doing. Uh, all over the place. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> if I ever say anything on this channel that possibly makes me sound like I'm being a jerk, please don't take it that way. These are just like opinions that I'm trying to verbally express and I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm trying to be considerate toward other people. It's just my own opinion that I'm probably not verbalizing very, very well. And it sounds like I'm criticizing, but I'm not. I really hope it doesn't come off like that. It's not the kind of person I am or want to be. Let me know how you guys think this is going so far. Let me know if you're learning anything from it, if I'm helping. This is how I go about finalizing a piece. Character design. Mm -hmm. at these gems on his belt and I need to marry them to the actual belt by, uh, by knocking down the hard edges on the sides of the uh, of the blue by putting the brown in there to blend it better so look way too crisp they don't look like they're part of it and also I'm going to a little bit go over there we go. It's <laughs> good music. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Green on that green is on. Look good, look good, look good. Invert. It's back to this glove. Let me grab this blue. There's a blue in there. Right along the edge. 
because I'm sort of planning the uh, the gloves out for the uh, fireball going to be in there. That's going to be in there. Um, sort of planning it out, not too much. I'm adding a little bit of blue to it because I know the fireball is going to be blue, the blue flame, and hitting my normal lighting of where the surfaces will be hit from the fireball so like this fingertip will be hit because fireball will be right in there so this fingertip that finger this fingertip and then the creases i'm gonna grab my smudge and just pull a couple wrinkles out wrinkles from the ha the gloves <laughs> not on that side uh, yeah it would be on that side lights coming from this way so yeah A lot of artists don't like the smudge tool. They like to paint it in manually. I don't mind the smudge tool. If you can use it properly and make uh, make the the smudge look like brush strokes. Basically just to pull in like I'm sketching with the smudge tool by grabbing some of the colors from this area and dragging them in. I've got neighbors, so if you can hear people outside, you know, don't worry about it. You're just people talking outside. Italians. All these Italians around here. Forget about it. Give them the gabagoli. Gabagoli. Alright, um, that's enough Italian. <laughs> enough of my bad Italian accent. I can work on the UI Cassante. Okay, I wouldn't consider this fidgeting because I'm still trying to make the glove readable. I'm just popping in uh, the seams and details in there. There we go. A little bit of a break up that highlight don't make it like like this don't make it like a steady highlight going all the way through you want to break it because there are some places in the shadow break break where is that being hit being hit lights being hit there there just uh put a little touch where the lights being hit you don't gotta do this whole line like that outside of the seam just where it's being hit yeah and uh, when you're it's good to stay at a safe range of uh, vision like this instead of being like right in here and you know touching like this because you'll get way too detailed when you go in this close and just worry about this one area instead of trying to match the detail to the rest of the piece out this far you know these people are noisy outside you people what do you mean you people Alright, I feel like, let me take the marching ants off, and yeah, yeah, I'm liking it, That's, this is going to be getting hit with the highlight, because of the fire is going to be in there. Cool, 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 cool. 
There we go. We married those edges. We're almost there, guys. We're almost there. We're gonna make the. Uh... Ooh, I just noticed something. Check out the difference in the size. Let me make a new layer. Let me make a new layer and what I'm going to do is this. Draw a circle around that and then I'm going to drag it over here. And sideways. Yep. Got to fix that. That's okay because it's in front and that's okay. Uh, what I'm doing is making a size comparison. These, this one right here is way small compared to that one. Well, it's not small, it's just, it's not the same shape. It's not elliptical, it's more round. So what I want to do is Take this, put it over here, bring the opacity down, so I can barely see that red. Go back to that layer, and I'm going to select I'm going to select this outside of the gloves, this outer area. And Actually, we don't need to do that. Yeah, okay, okay. I'm sorry I talked myself out of it. I talked myself out of that part at least. Yeah. Because we can just paint that, but what we, need, what we need to do is grab this and make it elliptical. We don't need to get super like detailed or uh, detailed lasso because we could just paint. That's the whole gift about being able to paint uh, down, up, wide. There we go, now we're matching that red, that red line, the red ellipse. And get rid of that layer, don't need it anymore. What did I do? Oh, I just brought it down. Okay. Go back and we're going to paint now. Paint it back in. <laughs> Anything else to erase? Nope. Uh, small 100, 100 because I'm doing solids. I gotta do my solids from the uh, from the things that I just took out. And then I'll go back to a lower opacity to blend it in. But right now I gotta fill in these holes with the solid. So I'm at a hundred. See, you don't have to be too detailed, just knock it in. Just take your time and go, oh, this line, uh, 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 and noodle over it. No, just like, blow it in. Hmm. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come on, you grab you the darkest. There we go. Cool. Nice contrast right there on the knuckles. Contrast. Ooh, let me take my flow down. There we go. Now we're blending nicely. up a little guys I think I said just about everything I wanted to say to catch you guys up on what's going on with me what I've been putting my time toward so now we're just going to stay in some music and painting quietness until I come up with something to say. It's a little bit of details. I don't want to get carried away, like I said. Try to remember that. Don't get carried away with your details. The gloves aren't the focal point. The face, the accessories, as far as his chest medallion and his belt buckle, and his magic are the focal point. That's what I want to sell. Since I'm going to be doing this with a lot of my characters in my portfolio, revising them and uh, trying to record the process, um, let me know in the comments of this video what aspect of the character design process you want to see and I'll try to focus on recording that. I mean, I could record the whole process. And, but that's going to take a really long time since just cleaning this up is almost at two hours. So, um, so we don't have an extremely long video time. Um, let me know what aspects of creating a character you would like recorded the most. Um, I'm doing this because some people in the past said they would like to see we lower the music you can't focus okay uh some people said they would like to see how to finish a character how to finish a painting and finalize it and these are the tips that i'm trying to show you right now by uh leaving different objects at a certain level of detail and bringing others to more finished polished detail because you're trying to sell something and you don't want everything to be at the same level of detail this this translates not just in character design but also in environments backgrounds uh vehicles you don't want to bring everything to the same level of polish because then then everything is super readable too readable for it to have points of interest and your eyes just go everywhere and they're not led you're not leading them around the picture Nice, nice, nice. Is that light? Yep. Mm 
I should close the window, but it's hot in here. And then if I was to turn on the fan, you would hear it in the microphone. And it wouldn't be pleasant either, so. I'm trying to do the best I can with what I got. Shading. And this is the back, so they will have to be darker. Back out, back out. Okay. You get too close, and you start losing focus of what you need to achieve as far as uh, values and. as values and what do you want your focal point to be so let's so what you do is to marry them you grab the fur color the dark the shade of the fur and you blend it in with the connecting point of the two elements I'm going to do the same thing over here. Yeah, I wish I could talk more about the Sega art test that I just did. It was really fun. Um, I can't talk about it because I signed a contract, you know, a non-disclosure agreement. We call it NDA in the... Uh, Whenever you hear that term, NDA, means non-disclosure agreement. That means that you can't say anything about it. Um, I can only say that I did a test for them, but I can't say what it was about or even show it. So, um, I don't want to say that stinks because that's the way the the that's the way it goes. That's the way the industry works. Like they don't want you to show what they're possibly working on case other companies uh you know steal the idea or make a likeness or you know it leaks out and it's not a surprise anymore so but uh it's um it's one of the things about being professional uh your demeanor your the way you carry yourself you know gotta stay stay loyal to the agreements that you sign not just that, they can sue you, <laughs> but <laughs> they can make a lawsuit against it if you leak information. But uh, it, all I can say, it was it was a fun art test and waiting for a few people, they're waiting for a few more people to submit their test, their finished test, so that they can make a educated decision on who they want to hire. 
and I hope I get it because it's convenient and close and um, yeah I could use a job right now because um, freelance work is is great it's fun I go work in my underwear if I wanted to you know sit here on my computer at home and work in my underwear or you know freedom really I'm not literally meaning underwear but you know sometimes you do but um i just mean there's a lot of freedom with freelance and uh but you are your own boss and your own art director and sometimes just get burnt out from it and you want to work for a place you want to work for a company and be told what to do and you know hit home runs rather than just you know micromanaging yourself okay does that look alright? Does that look alright? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. da, da, da. Here we go, it's a deep part. Da, 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 da. gradient on the back of this belt. like with the colors over it. Cool. Alright. Then we have a blue tone over everything. We'll go invert selection, erase. Actually, I don't have a brush. Go to that layer. I hope this is helping. You can see how I get to a finished finished phase. I'm just going over the outside right now, making sure I erase all of the edges that are outside that went over the, the character, the painting layer. In the color mode. Um, I'll go back to this and do the same thing with the eraser. Knockout. So what I want to do now is get this specular color, this extreme highlight that I have, and I want to go over the areas that will be the areas that will be highlighted. One, two, bop, 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 and the fur probably wouldn't, but except for like these really hard edges, just to just to fudge it a little bit to to make them stand out, make the edges stand out. So as far as the selling point is concerned, like the space is the selling point. So I'm gonna get in here, find details. This side is being lit, so that gets knocked up. 
not pregnant, knocked up, like, uh, as far as, uh, <laughs> as far as specular lighting. Next song, I don't like this song, no. There we go, some marching music. So gonna get a lighter color of that. Again, I'm listening to Final Fantasy XIV, A Realms Are Born soundtrack. Such a great soundtrack to work to. Specular, knock you up too much. There we go. On this brush, the uh, the bigger you make it, the bigger you make it, the better you have, um, the better your painter's stroke comes out. Like if it's small, it doesn't give you that look, that feel you're looking for, the stroke. The smaller you make it, it, it gives you a more concentrated stroke. So the bigger you make it, the more faded it's going to be. Painterly, just dabbing colors in there. see right there above this glove on the outside there's the invert selection erase yep knock that out okay okay jump around jump around what does this look like that looks way too white Let's knock this back.
specular on these. And what we can do on these right here is not just have the uh, not just have a hard edge of a specular, but we can uh, grab our feather brush right here and very lightly, too much, very lightly hit that area that the specular is at to get that little bit of shine going on. It's a little bit. There we go. And then we can do the same on this side. Ba -ba -da -ba. And right here, a little shine, a little shine. You want to bring the, sh the feathered shine off of into the darkness so that you can see there's a light hitting it. Light hitting that, so that's feathered. Yeah, cool. Little one, no, too much. Don't get carried away with it. Uh, too carried away. Too much. One here on the belt. There. You really should do this on another layer and then. Uh, and then merge the layers afterward so that you can play with the levels of it. Otherwise, you're gonna kill your painting if you go overboard. I feel confident though, so. <laughs> feel good about this. Sweet. <laughs> uh, there's something over here I can't see. I'm going to delete it. There we go. Now we could pull it. Make him bigger. And put my my reference layer for these on. So I want to put the circle up here and the flame down here just for myself for visual reference of the the sphere being lit by that flame which is going to show me give me a better idea of how the things are going to be lit on here according to the flame in the palm of his hand so if i grab that copied and pasted it above this Could probably use that. Alright, and another thing to take into account is the direction of uh, wind or elements, anything going on. If the cape, if uh, the cloth is flowing a certain way, then the flame will most likely be flowing that way as well. Like you can see the hair on the top of his head, it's kind of in this direction, it's kind of in that direction and the cloth is that direction so that leads me to believe that that's a terrible arrow sorry that's uh leads me to believe that everything's flowing in that direction to the right which would be the opposite for the other side everything would be flowing this way because he's rotated and turned around be flowing that way so 
the flame would be going that direction and on this side it would be going in this direction so let me get rid of all those arrows and we can manipulate our flame make a cool shape Try not to kill the uh, integrity of your flame in the process of doing this, but let's make like a bowed effect of the flame. Keep it kind of spherical at the bottom. And we can go in and fix things. Make adjustments as we do it or after we get the uh, basic direction we want. I think that's cool. Yeah. And for this one, since it's covering his face, if we use the same one, let's rotate it and then warp the uh, We'll warp the tips that way. Sorcerer Boar. to look the same because they do look the same like it was copy and pasted which it was so we're gonna go in and we're gonna paint uh, differences subtle variations <coughs> so I can turn that can I turn that off I can turn it off for now that bottom layer and what I want to do is grab that color and let's just start noodling. Paint some cool some cool directions for these flames to go up. Don't make them too thin. If you guys are still watching this video, thanks for sticking around for two hours. And putting up with my humming. Designs in here. Break it up. Let's break it up. I don't want to stay married to it. Let's break it up. We'll get some cool designs in there. And I'm using the smudge tool right now, so. Let me see what a feathered one does. Uh, a feathered one with shape dynamics. This might be better. Yeah, I like that better. I 
and you can see the difference that the feathered brush is giving me the feathered uh, smudge brush is giving me um, a better opacity that you can see the the outfit the character through the flame compared to the other side you see this is very solid but this is giving me a nice opacity and I can see through it so I'm just gonna bring some of the transparent background into the feather into the flame so I can see through it Oh, that looks nice. I'm happy with that. If I see so myself. Let's get that blue going up. Oh, sweet. I really like those colors. Let's get some op opacity in here. Some transparency, I mean. Let me see if I take my strength down. It gives me a nice smoother flow. It's giving me a very hard flow. Yeah, that's better. It's weird because uh, less strength gives you better control of the smudge tool. For most cases, as far as things like this. too crazy with this because I still want it to read as stylized and not too realistic. So let's get some edges in here where it still looks stylized but and not like a realistic flame. You want to have some elements of realism in it but only for like the uh, as far as the color and the way the uh, the way the flame um, lights itself and other things as far as the lighting is concerned but as far as the composition you want basic basic shapes like readable shapes that are appealing like edges and dips and curves knuckles they call it knuckles sometimes like this in here like what I'm doing right now it's like you have a shape and then you knuckle it and then you knuckle it kind of like a finger.
sorry I'm not talking so much as I'm in a zone right now. Get into a little zone. this area with something. Looks like it's losing itself in here. Losing the shape. You want to keep that blue, the light blue, over top of the dark blue, and then the white. So let's keep our shapes in there with each color. There we go. blue here, this light blue, and hit up here just a little bit with a low opacity, just for a little bit of a highlight. Just the edges, the knuckles area. Back out after a second, we're gonna back out and we're gonna look at it from far away because it has to read from far away. It doesn't matter how close you get, it has to read from far away. Let's say, let's just say this character was for League of Legends, right? Let's just say that this character was for League of Legends. What is the camera view of League of Legends when you're playing? It's from far away and it's overhead that's what the character needs to be read by not how close it is and all the details and frills and everything in there i mean that's nice to have as far as character design and and storytelling for the character and what they've been through where they're where they come from and uh, how they dress and stuff but it needs to be readable from from this far it needs to be readable and let's look at that flame I would like to play with the colors a little and bring that dark levels. Play with our levels. Bring the dark to blue and gray. Oh, there we go. Yeah, right about there, and then the highlight up. That's way too high. That's cool. How vibrant that is. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is a good color. This is very vibrant. It's definitely worthy of a light source on his body. do is paint the giant blob right here to keep the shape and then I'm gonna paint that highlight in there now I'm gonna pull that out again and try to retain the shape of that sphere of flame in his hand while making these knuckles because as much as I liked all those little details the little doodles in there the flame doodles it wasn't reading from far away. So, 
after all of that work and making that flame inside don't be afraid to just like you know knock it out just like get rid of it if it's not reading don't fall in love with your stuff same thing again let me go back just make it very minimal there we go all right I figured out what I wanted to do now with it bring that blue in and it's just gonna be an orb type light inside one two three four So if you guys want to know a lot of tips and tricks, I mean, or secrets to getting better, it's practice, man. Practice, practice, practice. Look at things, observe them, and draw them. Practice. There's no real secret. It's, it's that. It's just practice. Some people can get there faster because they're probably better at observing and, and, and putting it down on paper. And some people need to take their time. I mean, either way, it's all practice. It's about researching what you want to draw and then translating it to paper and then putting your own style on it, your own spin. Cool. Let me get a little highlight. Hot spots up here. Painterly highlights don't make too much detail. Love this music. try to do is I'm just gonna test this out I want to make a new layer or not a new layer I want to copy this layer and then I want to blur it and go to my filters blur Gaussian blur and I want to put a little bit of a blur on it so that it's not too crisp not too much a blur on it and then set it to a different kind of layer overlay no um, light colors green. Ooh, that's cool but way too bright linear dodge color dodge what does burn do burn makes it darker I want it lighter and vibrant screen I like the screen but I like the dodge better, but it's just a weight. The linear dodge looks cool. Well, let's see what happens. Um, bring it down a little. All right, take it off. Put it on. I like it. It's really bright. It's actually brighter than the eyes, and it's leading your eyes to his fist. So what we need to do, if we want the, the flame this bright, what we need to do is to make make the sides of the face that are being hit by the flame um a higher luminosity which means uh we have to make the lighting higher on the side of the face than anything else on the body because 
this is what we want to sell. We're not selling the flame. I mean, that's part of the cell. That's part of the focal point, but we want to sell this face first. So we might not even want that. Yeah. Now let's keep it. I'm going to get rid of that layer and do it. Put it back later when I have both sides complete. Ba -da -ba. All right, uh, flame. So let's get a circle. What circle we want? This. Just throwing in blobs. You don't have to be too neat right now. Just composition blobs for this. Now I'm gonna smudge and pull out, go to the smudge tool and pull out the shapes that I want for the flame. Got a hole in there, a hole in there, a hole in here. Maybe one there. Not too many. Like I said, we want it to read from far away. So, uh, brush. One. Pop, pop, pop. Pop, pop, pop. Brush a little bit bigger, uh, 80. Some hues in and out, dark blue in, light blue out, dark blue in, light blue out to make that nice little flame ring. Same thing with the white. And it is good to work from reference, so if you can't do a flame like this, or if you're having trouble, um, pull up some of the games that you like, and uh, what you're trying to recreate. Not that I'm trying to recreate anything, but I'm trying to follow a certain style, and 
I know the style, so if you don't know the style, pull up some images of games that you want to create artwork like, or um, character designs like, or whatever, effects, and use those as reference. It's always good to work from reference. Just pulling the transparency in like I did with the other one. The transparency is the negative area that doesn't have any paint on it. And I might be liking this side better than the other one. Which is good, because yeah, I used the first side, the other one, as, uh, you know, the prototype, the firstborn flame, it's the prototype, it's like when you have kids, <laughs> the first one is always the test subject, and then you have a better grasp on how to raise the next kid. Which one do I like better? I like the left or the right? Hmm. After looking at both of these, I'm debating if I like any of them. Mm, you know what? Let me save that layer. Save my project. Don't forget to save. Don't forget to save your work. Or you'll lose it. Alright. Um, I'm going to make a new flame. What I can do is bring up the colors that I liked. Let me go back. I'm going to bring up the colors that I liked and put them in. I liked this one. The white, the white color. And that blue a little lighter, a little more true, there we go, alright so these are the colors I want to work with, keep the true colors, okay, and then I will turn off this layer. 
And let's make a new one. Let's sketch it out first. Mm. Oh, I, Final Fantasy music was over. Let me try to find some more music because I like music. So I want to create a basic shape circle where the flame is going to be. And then the direction, the energy of it is going to go up and over to this way. And I'm going to make I'm going to make a different looking flame this time and see if I like it better. More body to it. Take my opacity down. I'm going to fill this. We're going on three hours in a little bit. Nothing wrong with a three hour video if you're learning something. some unique cool shapes I want to get done with this flame and then I'm going to probably turn the video off because I need a break I need a mental break as fun as doing this stuff is it's really good to uh, step away for a little while I want to get this flame done and then I'm going to wrap up the video and if you want to see the final version after the flame I'm going to uh, work on the lighting on his body that the flame is uh, emitting the light source and then um, I should be done with him I'm going to put him in a presentation on a page to present them well and then he's going to be done so if you guys want to see that finished sorcerer boar the sorcerer piggy boar uh, you can head over to my facebook i will link it in the link it in the description when i'm done when i upload the video you can probably tell by the way i'm talking right now I'm little mentally exhausted plus I have to put this down and uh, do some freelance work I have other work like paid work to do so I'm gonna try to get this video out and then get to work because this is for me for personal it's for my portfolio I still have to get other client work done Let's get a nice body. Alright, now I'm going to select it. Let's get our next color. 
Uh, low opacity. You know what? Let me get a feather brush. Make a gradient. Let me put on dodge. Nice and bright. Too bright. Watch your dodge tool. Very easy to get carried away and overdo it. All right. Um, just want to light a side of this. Select a flame shape or something in here. And deselect the outside of that. And that. And what this is going to do is allow me to take my feathered brush and do the same thing and hit those edges to make them pop. Oh, cool. Yep, that's what I wanted. That's way better than the other one. selections come around that way that we it's just uh it's not as much as a guessing game as you think it is making these selections uh flames have a certain body to them as far as uh, the way they're lit And I'm sorry if I'm making you people fall asleep with my voice being so monotone right now. Okay, okay, okay. There we go. And I'll smudge a little bit. feather brush with no shape dynamics on it so I can pull more of an area instead of a finer tip and something keeps unplugging some USB thing keeps unplugging from my computer I don't know what Just blurring these edges so they're not so harsh on top of each other by blending them and erase this so I don't like that edge and then pull it out. Usually we're on the flame, like I was saying before, before I didn't finish. Um, 
usually where things intersect there's a bright spot like this line's going that way this one's coming that way and this one's coming that way where they converge there's usually a bright spot in there like right there that fades out into the rest of it and right here because the uh the parts that fade that uh go out are usually faded because they're not the point of of intensity uh, the point of intensity is usually the thing that's pushing out forks in different uh, directions. So there might be one in there in the middle. And then right here, I believe, there would be one before this one goes out, that one goes out. Right there. You're not lighting it like it's an object. You're lighting it like there's points of luminosity inside that are emitting lights. One, two, and I'm going to make some really hot spots in here. Three, four. Really hot spots. Select. Cool. Maybe a few little lighter spots in these areas. Grab your selection tool and get some chunks. There, and I'm going to get my blur, blur brush. Blur it and blend them all together. Cool. Now, um, I've come across the problem here, and that's because I have things on different layers. I have, uh, but like I said earlier, I'm happy with the pigs, the pig himself, the boar. So what I'm going to do is most likely merge these layers right here. There we go. And there. Okay, so now I need to pull them apart. We, I can turn this off now. In my reference layer for the time being because I still want to use my reference layer to light from to use the uh, light the lighting um, the lighting reference I'm sorry <laughs> I'm getting tired use the lighting reference for uh, the flame underneath like if you look at it you can see the flame underneath the bounce light or the yeah luminosity and then I'll take my flame and bring it over turn it on right there erase erase because I'm going to light it on a different layer all right, so now I have adequate spacing between them, which means I can grab these, copy, flip horizontal, shrink, since they're in front of them and further away. more so I can get an opening in there let's look down here so then I take the layer down the opacity and then I can erase it out it 
if you select an object on a layer and then you move it with the selection around it and then you go to your lasso tool and hold alt you will get the negative lasso tool which means you deselect things and when you uh, when you select an object and then move it it goes into a mode where you can also erase what you deselect from that it's part of a copy paste function select the areas that are not going to be hit by the flame or the flame will be behind one two deselect alright then we'll do the same thing on this side so I'm going to select it with the lasso tool move it a smidgen with the arrow key and then when I go to deselect these areas they will be erased Oopsie. select and then I got a really sharp edge here crap okay so blend those edges so it's not so hard Opacity. guys that's uh three hours and four minutes of my day for you and i'm gonna spend about another maybe 40 minutes to an hour putting in the lighting from the flame onto the pig's body and this will not be another video you will just be able to see this on my facebook So I'll put in the description my Facebook page so you can go and hit follow the follow button or like so that you can get updates on what I'm working on if you're interested. And once again, sorry for getting all low talking and the monotone, but uh, this does get mentally draining, not just painting and coming up with 
with uh, ideas, but also, you know, having to dialogue and talk through it. So, which is, I mean, you see a lot of those videos online, the other tutorials, and <laughs> they're not three hours long, they're like a half hour, but nope, I'm going to go eat some lunch and then get back to doing this, so thanks guys I hope you uh, learned something I hope I helped you with uh, some tips and tricks here is source of board before he's lit and you can see the finished one on my Facebook alright uh, take care keep drawing and I'll talk to you guys soon bye bye as always I'd like to thank you guys for watching supporting my channel and uh, also giving me feedback comments and subscribing and sharing the videos and and my artwork with people and and the fact that I'd like to help you know what I mean um, I, I genuinely care I genuinely care about the community and and how far people can go if they try hard and they put their effort into it I didn't get here overnight I've been drawing for for years so um, if you go to my Facebook page uh, click follow and you'll be able to see all of the things I've been working on as far as uh, projects personal and projects client base that I'm allowed to show uh, some ZBrush in there some car uh, character concepts uh, paintings all kinds of things just head to my Facebook page and click the like or click the like or follow button